All right, so um, for factoring quadratics practice, hopefully you watched the slide and divide video. Um, <clears throat> students in the past, when they've watched that, have said how it just helps them tremendously. Um, so what I wanted to do was I was just going to do uh, maybe four problems with you, two that don't require slide and divide, and two that do. Um, so let's look at um, two that do not require slide and divide. If your leading coefficient is one, in other words, you just have an x squared, you don't need slide and divide. So for numbers like number one, number two, three, and four, you do not need slide and divide. Once you start having a leading coefficient that's not one, like seven, seven, six, two, these are the ones where you're going to need slide and divide. So let's talk about how to do ones like number one. Um, when I have it where I don't need a leading coefficient, what I do is I um, teach a method which is called the diamond method. And the reason it was called the diamond method, um, a lot of times it would be drawn like this, or it was an actual diamond. <laughs> but um, I usually just draw an X. And what I do is um, in the top of the diamond, I put the number that I want to get a product of, which is a product of negative 18. And then in the bottom of the diamond, I put the number I want to have a sum of. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have two um, binomials. We know that for x squared, each of these is going to be x. And then we want the um, product to be negative 18. So whatever these numbers are here and here have to give us a product of negative 18 and a sum of negative 7. So I still start listing my factors of 18. I just think of 18, not the negative part yet. I know I have 1 and 18, 2 and 9, 3 and 6. And then I have to ask myself, is there any way from 1 and 18, 2 and 9, or 3 and 6, I could get a sum of negative 7. Well, I think to myself, well, yeah, I could have negative 9 and positive 2. And when you multiply them, you get a product of negative 18, and you get a sum of negative 7. Therefore, this is what I'm going to put in my um, binomials. It doesn't matter what order. I could write it like this. Or I could have written it with the x plus 2 first, and then the x minus 9. But it does matter the signs. It can't be a negative 2 and a positive 9, because that would give us positive 7. So this gives me my product of negative 18 and my sum of negative 7. So these are my factors. Either way. You could write it either way. You can always check your work. When you hand in um, a quiz on factoring, you should already know if you got it right or not. Because when you multiply it back out, you should get what you started with. So if I was to FOIL this, FOIL is first, outers, inners, last. First terms give me x squared. The outer terms give me negative 9x. My inner terms give me 2x, and my last terms give me negative 18. And when I get that together, I do get x squared minus 7x minus 18. The thing about factoring is it's right or it's wrong. It's kind of like saying, what are the factors of 15 if you tell me they're 3 and 4? And I say, no, it's 3 and 5. Well, I was close. Yeah, but 3 times 4 is 12. And 3 times 5 is 15. So you either, when you multiply, you either get the right answer or you don't. So with factoring, it's right or it's wrong. There is no, it was close. So you've got to be really careful. And that's why it's great to check your work if you're uncertain. All right, let's do another one. Let's do number two. All right, my product of negative 14 and my sum of negative 5. I'm going to set up my two binomials. I know that I have to have an x and an x to get me that x squared. And I think about my um, factors of 14. I have 1 and 14, and I have 2 and 7, and that's it. 
So which of these can give me a sum of negative 5? I could have negative 7 and positive 2. That will give me a sum of negative 5. Now I am going to check my work just to make sure that I didn't make a mistake. First, I get x squared. Outers, I get 2x. Inners, I get negative 7x. And the last terms, I get negative 14. And this would indeed give me that negative 5x that I was looking for. All right, so those are the two that I was going to do with you where the leading coefficient was 1. Now let's come down here and let's do one where we would need slide and divide. We need slide and divide when our leading coefficient is something other than 1. For instance, let's look at number 5. Let's do this one. So we did 1 and 2, and let's go ahead and do number 5. In slide and divide, when your leading coefficient is not 1, the first step is to slide your leading coefficient over to here and multiply. So we get a new quadratic, x squared minus 27x minus 28, because 7 times 4 is negative 28. So the first step in slide and divide was to slide. So I did the slide, I'm going to kind of keep track here. Now I need to factor. And this is where we're going to have to factor the same way we did on numbers 1 and 2. Negative 28 is my product. Negative 27 is my sum. So I'm going to think about my factors of 28. I have 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7. And is there any way to get negative 27 from any of these factors? I'm thinking negative 28 and positive 1. So my factors are going to be minus 28 and plus 1. Now, of course, I can't just leave it like this because this is a different equation than this. So now I have to do the divide step. So here I did slide, factor, now divide. This is the divide part of slide and divide. And I have to divide by whatever I multiplied by. I'm going to write that down in case I don't remember that, by what I multiplied by. Well, I multiplied by 7. So I had to first slide, then I had to factor, then I had to divide. Next I have to simplify. This is the step people forget. Now simplify if you can. I look at these two fractions. If they can be simplified, I need to simplify them. If they can't, then I leave them. But this one can be simplified. So this becomes x minus 4, and this one is still x plus 1 seventh. And now the final step is to unslide. So slide, factor, divide, simplify, unslide. Unslide right there. That's going to now go to the front and I get x minus 4 times 7x plus 1. And if you were to check that and FOIL that, you will get 7x squared minus 27x minus 4. All right, let's do one more. Uh, let's, how about we just do number 7, the one right below it. Okay. So I'm going to start by sliding the 6. And when I do that, I get x squared minus x minus 72. 
Now I have to factor. Let's see, all my factors of 72. I have 1 and 72, 2 and 36, uh, 3 and, let's see, I'm use my calculator. How many times is uh, 72 divided by 3? 24. This is a lot of factors. Uh, 4 and 18. I know it can't be divided by 5. How about 6? Let's see. And 12. Not going to be divisible by. Into, um, I know 8 and 9. And then I would start. Um, it can't be divisible by 10 or 11. Then I'm back to 12. So these are all my factors of 72. Do any of them add to negative 1? That's what I have to ask myself. Because, sorry, I didn't draw this negative 72 and negative 1. Uh, that would be, how about negative 9 and positive 8? So x is going to be minus 9 and plus 8. So that was my slide, and then I factored. Now I have to divide by what I multiplied by. I multiplied by 6, so I have to divide by 6. Then I have to simplify. This would be x minus 3 halves. This would be x plus 4 thirds. And the last step is to unslide. Bring that 2 over, bring that 3 over, and I get 3, I'm sorry, 3, 2x, and 3x plus 4. And um, those are the only ones I was going to go over. So you've got lots more practice, I will tell you, that you have to be able to do this really well. Um, and the only way to get good at this is to practice. At first, you're going to have to think about it a little more and follow the steps. Once you've done a bunch, you're going to find this easy. Um, that's why I've given you so much practice. You have these 20, and then I gave you another page of um, some practice as well.